So there are three ways to run an open bazaar store right now. Option one is to run the built-in server on your computer. Um, you go to openbazaar.org, download the program, and you just leave that program running. As long as the program is running, people can connect to your computer, browse your wares, and buy from you. You also need a pretty good internet connection. Any broadband should do, but it does take some bandwidth. Option two is to rent a VPS. I've shown this process in a few of my other videos. Option two requires basic knowledge of Linux server administration and a monthly fee. I pay about $5 a month for my VPS that runs save a bit. And that brings us to option three. Option three is to pay a knowledgeable individual or company for OpenBazaar hosting. They set up the server and just give you a username and password to log in to your OpenBazaar server from your OpenBazaar client. Depending on your experience, option three might make a lot of sense to you. Today I'd like to show you option three, the hosted solution from the provider agoristhosting.com. I've got a web browser open here, and I'm going to head over to agoristhosting.com slash openbazaar. Here's the welcome page that tells you about their service, but I'm going to let you read that, and I'll click this sign up now for instant activation button. Then I want to create a new account, so I'll re register. I could also log in using Twitter or Microsoft, which is pretty cool. Um, email I'm going to use saveabit at grimtech.net. Password, I'm just going to make up something here. First name, I'm going to put Chris, last name, Grimit. Then solve this CAPTCHA. Pretty basic registration, I'll save that username. Uh, must have an uppercase, okay? I'll we'll change this K to an uppercase. 1602, okay. CAPTCHA solved. We'll update that in, uh, password in Firefox. The next step is to create the Open Bazaar instance. We're going to name this um, Save a Bit 9001. The term, this is the payment term. I'm going to choose one month. It's $25 for one month. There's options for six months, uh, $108, and one year, $192. Some pretty good savings if you go for a longer term. So I'm going to do one month just to demo this um, service. I'll go accept the terms, and let me read them real quick here. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, terms important, yep, okay. Payment type, only Bitcoin, yeah, yeah. Um, I do not have a code, but that's where you could put in a coupon code if you had one. Oh, look at that, it breaks it down for you down here. <laughs> I'm going to click continue, go to the next page, and I'm guessing this is the page I pay with my Bitcoin wallet. So I'm opening opening up Mycelium on my phone, my favorite Bitcoin wallet. Paying for your service with Bitcoin. One month of Open Bazaar hosting. We've got a QR code here. I've got Mycelium open. I'm going to click Send and scan the QR code. And scan this QR code on my screen, which is uh, about $25, and there's a minor fee. That looks good. I'm going to type in my PIN. There we go, my wallet says the Bitcoin is being sent, and it's pending payment status. Oh, we got a waiting. Um, we've got no confirmations. It'll take about 10 minutes for the first confirmation, another 10 minutes for the second, another 10 minutes for the third. They're probably smart and wait for confirmations. So I'm going to check my email and see if there's further instructions in there. In my inbox, I see two emails from Agros Hosting. The first is to confirm my account, which I'll do real quick and my email is confirmed, cool. And then the second email is a new invoice. A new invoice has been entered in your account. Yep, that's the one I just paid for. So I could click this link if I hadn't paid right away. Okay, anything else in the inbox? Nope, okay. So let's check back here, one month, uh, still pending. In this link that I followed to confirm my email, there's a link to log in, so I'm going to do that and see what else I can do in my Agris Toasting account. I'll click the box to remember me and I'll log in. So I've got a password, an external login. What's an external login? Uh, that's if I wanted to log in using Twitter or Microsoft. Uh, Two-factor authentication, that's pretty cool. It's a good thing to have for security. Ooh, and then you enable it with Google Authenticator, but uh, I just wanted to see what option there was. I don't actually want to do it at this moment. Invoices, that's nice. So if I stuck with the service for a long period of time, this list would populate with all the invoices that I had paid or not paid yet. About a half hour later, and we have a payment completed. Cool. 
So I'm going to click press here to continue. Also in my email, I got this invoice paid button and I could click this button to uh, view the instance. Cool, it's as simple as that. I've got my login info info for my new instance. So I'm going to open OpenBazaar, the OpenBazaar client that I downloaded from openbazaar.org. I'm going to go over here to uh, the, the menu and right here it says the name of the server I'm currently connected to, which is Johnson. I'm going to go to new server. The name is going to be save uh, bit 9001 and then using the information in this um, in this page and it's also emailed to me I believe yep there we go uh, the server IP is domain name ob.agoristhosting.com SSL is on the username is save a bit 9001 password is this randomly generated password REST API port is 21396 these are not the defaults WebSocket port 21366 Heartbeat port 21370 and they will probably be different for you so if you do this make sure and enter in what your email says I'm going to click Save Changes and I'll be connected to my new instance. Very easy. This is the standard OpenBazaar welcome screen that um, gets your localization data. Um, English is my language. I'm going to click Next. Um, choose where I live so it can match the, the currency that I use. So it's going to be dollar, uh, United States dollar, so it can um, translate the cost in Bitcoin to my local currency. I'm going to put in my time zone and then create my store. That's a beautiful avatar. 30 seconds later. Now we're browsing, but now we could go to our store and create a listing. Oops, I clicked the wrong one. This is a customized page, but we could do that. I want whiteness. I want eye cancer whiteness. Ugh. Beautiful, beautiful. Become a store. Oh yes. Oh yes. Tags. We are here. Adult content. Oh yes. Maturity level needed. Create listing. Derp. Physical item. Five dollars. SKU is ABCD. Hello. Processing time. One hour later. No terms and conditions. No returns. No returns. Photos. Pick all these random photos. Category is fun stuff. Discover tags. Word. Fake. Nothing. Alphabet. Of course you would want to substitute your own tags if you're making a for real item. Comes with a free comb, yo. Save a bit over 9,000. And that's it. That is how you create an open bazaar server that runs in the cloud that you don't have to worry about. You don't have to make backups because they happen automatically. You don't have to know the Linux command line. It's all just taken care of for you. And then we can see that our store is online by using the website Duo Search, Duo Sir. CH. We can search for our OpenBazaar um, GUID. I'll just paste it in there, and there we go. Save a bit over 9,000. It is online, people. It is online. It is that easy to run an OpenBazaar store using Agris Hosting. Let's see what else we can do in the control panel. We can change the password, which is the password used to log into the OpenBazaar server instance. If we change that here, we would need to go in here and go to save a bit 9001. We first have to disconnect, so we connect to the local host server, and then that uh, edit configuration comes available, and that's the password right here. We can turn this instance off in case we were on vacation or something and we didn't want people ordering from us. And that would be the running option. And then we get notifications, which is very handy uh, because that means I don't have to keep my open bazaar client open all the time and connected to my instance. My instance can just be off on its own in the cloud, and I could close my client and if, if I make a sale I'll get an email about it instead of having the pop-ups in the OpenBazaar client. And these are the types of notifications. So say I get a lot of followers, I don't want to be emailed every time I get a follower, I just uncheck that box and then save. Super simple. And let's see what else we can do here. Let's go to OpenBazaar Hosting and here we get a list of our instances. So if I had a store that 
sold beads and an another store that sold seashells, I could make a new instance. Um, let's see, we can change our password here, and then this is really nice, a um, button to resend the welcome email. I'm going to click that now just to show you. There we go, a new instance is ready, and it's the same one we got previously. This is in case you forget how to log in to your OpenBazaar instance from your OpenBazaar client. Just that same email with the username and password and the ports and the domain name. Uh, we've got some details here. We can manage this instance, which is the page that we were on previously. Cool. Cool. We'll go back. And what's this one? List notifications. Ah, very handy. Back at the control panel, I can see the instance is enabled, it's running, and I can stop it or restart it. That might be handy in case there's a problem with the server, it can be easily restarted. That's about it for features, and it's really all you need to get a store running. Everything else you do through the OpenBazaar client. Seems pretty simple. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful, and I hope you enjoy OpenBazaar.